always brothers, sisters, Al-Quran and the way of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu life used to teach the Ummah not to give a general judgment under any condition. Because the theory says your attitude absolutely based on the information that you have about an individual person or ideology or even identities, organizations, governments, people, countries, nations, this kind of attitude, this kind of kind of work against or with based on the information that you have. Now any information you have it, you read it in somewhere or somebody told you about them, it doesn't mean that this information 100% correct. Always Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to teach the Sahaba. It might, this information is not correct. You don't know. The first scholar, he wrote this as a theory in book. And he put it as way of understanding Imam Abu Hanifa. Abu Hanifa and Nu'man ibn Thabit. He was born 80 years after the Hijrah. Passed away 150. He is all Tabi'i. He said always, this is what I believe, but I could be mistaken. This is number one. So not always the information that you have about somebody or some people or some ideologies or even organizations or countries 100% correct. You don't know. Number one. Number two, also we have something wrong in our culture that you considered the first teacher taught you something, his knowledge is correct, and the others are what? Wrong. Especially if he starts comparing what he said to you, what he taught you, with the others, and he told you, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. The moment that any teacher told you, don't listen to other people, Immediately you have to put the question mark about him. Why? Why you wanna make me copy on you? Why? Islam came since day one, Ikhwani, to open the mind. How many times in the Quran you read? Qulinduru. Go and look. Go and search. Go and study. Go and read. Collect information. Do not make decision based on somebody statement you don't know maybe he is what copying from somebody and that somebody is copying from somebody else and everybody is copying without even make sure that this information is correct or not unless if he is what receiving revelation if he is rasul over our head no doubt about that but any human being, he's a human being, we have to make sure that this information 100% correct. Then you adapt and you start what? Telling people or teaching people about this kind of information. For that reason, Ikhwani, the statement is my attitude based on my information. For that reason, this also goes two ways. Sometimes, you have a bad attitude because you have a wrong information and sometimes you will adopt wrong information because of the bad attitude. Let me give you an example. If a person is a thief, he steals from others wealth. This is his business. He, he thought he's a smart person. This is an attitude, am I right? Attitude. This is an attitude, am I right? So down to the road, he will change his knowledge and his information about stealing and you will see him one day start defending himself. Why it's wrong? Who told you it's haram? So he will change even his th thinking, his thought, his faith because of what? 
the bad attitude. So this is very dangerous in the education. When you raise somebody, you have to make sure that you give him the right information so the attitude of him will be reflection of this right information. Otherwise, it will affect the attitude and it will affect the behave and sometimes you create a criminals because of the wrong information. For that reason, Ikhwani, always don't be in a hurry. Don't give general judgment. Don't be, give title for the people. This person is good and this person is bad. Based on what? Somebody told you? Who is this somebody? Who gave him the authority to judge humans? We do those, those mistakes? Yes, we do. We have this problem among the community in the social life? Yes, we have. Because we are what? Udun. We listen and we adapt without make sure that this information 100% correct, not 99.9. .9. Doesn't make uh, absolutely the statement correct if it's not 100%. Now we have three examples today I want to share with you about how the attitude and the information can be in, in a certain way affect each other uh, in, in, in two ways. Number one, the story of Sulaiman salam with Balqis, the Malika Saba, the queen of Saba in Yemen. This lady, she was worshipping what? The sun. And this is something in, in the history used to be huge. Even Ibrahim السلام, when he was in Iraq, you remember the Ayat al An'am? They said, when they saw the sun, they said, Hada Akbar, this is bigger. And they created for the sun day. During the week, they call it sun day. And the Western culture, they adopted up to today, Sunday off because they used to worship the sun in this day. It's not from the Christianity. It's before the Christianity. Sunday, the day of sun. He used to worship the sun on that day. So this lady, Balqis, she used to worship her and her qawm, the sun, as shams. Now Sulaiman, as king, he doesn't know about her. The report came from the hudhud, the bird, to Sulaiman alayhi salam, we have community in Yemen, they are not worshipping God, they worship the sun. Now Sulaiman alayhi salam, he was Nabi, receiving wahi. Allah azza wa jal taught him how to change the attitude of any person without fighting him, without threatening him, without start accusing him. No, he needs knowledge. Your kids these days, Ikhwani, your cousins, your partners, your neighbors, your wife, your husband. Before you build enmity between you and them, teach them the right thing. You, they, they don't know. Maybe they don't know. Nobody told them. You never explained to her that you don't like, for example, such and such in the house. Tell her. So Sulaiman, alayhi salatu was salam, when he invited the queen of Saba to his kingdom, he prepared for her place to let her see the sun in the naked eyes, to see that the sun is not God, sun is it's a star, gas, hydrogen, uh, creation, needs, need, needs maintained. And this is not something like God. He, this is not something you can worship as the creator. So he changed her what? Knowledge. Immediately she changed her what? Attitude. And she became what? A mu'mina. When she came to Sulaiman, قِيلَ لَهَا She been told, أُدْخُلِ الصَّرْحِ Enter the place. Sarh is a place. Sulaiman built a telescope. The Quran said it's qawarir. What's qawarir? Means glass. He put glasses over, over each other's like telescope to make the picture of the sun what? Huge and clear. The, she entered with him. 
And he explained to her, you worship the sun, let me tell you what's the sun. Look, oh my goodness, I used to worship this. A'udhu Billah. After that meeting with Sulaiman, what she said? Qalat amantu. I believed ma'a Sulaiman, with Sulaiman, lillah rabbil alameen. I believed now in Allah, the creator, I don't know. I thought God is the sun. Al-Shams, this, this is what she used to think. How many person in our life, he built his thought based on the wrong information and we sometimes punish them without teaching them, without trying to change their information. This is a very important way to create friends, to help people, take them out of the darknesses to the light. Don't build walls between you and others. Even if they are disagree with you, even if they don't know, even if they are not supporting you, still they are human. Give them the knowledge that they are looking for. Help them out. Then let them choose. This is what Prophet Muhammad he, he did to Quraysh government, Quraysh community, and Medina society. Explain, answer questions, clarify situations. No forcement. Example number two. Umar, radiyallahu anhu, before he became a Muslim, he was very honest young man in the government of Mecca, in the society of Mecca. And everybody loved that person because he used to be a straight person. No decoration for anyone, and he, whatever, whatever in his heart, on his tongue. The truth. He said, when they start making agreements and meetings, what we can do to Muhammad, how we can stop Muhammad, his statement was, oh people, wallahi, I'm not against Muhammad as personal disagreement. He's a good person. I never saw this man lying or cheating or stealing. All what I built against him because he divided Mecca. That's his concern. Mecca used to be united, now Mecca is not united. This is his concern. So he built, which is he was wrong also, he built the hate to Muhammad based on this. Before even reading the Quran, learning about his religion, before all these things. But there is a person used to, to work with Umar to give him messages about Islam. Teach him indirectly. Explain to him something about Muhammad to make Umar what? To make Umar what? Reviewing his situation. This person is his brother. Step brother. His name is Zaid ibn al-Khattab. He became Muslim early. Before Umar. Secretly. He used to go and visit Umar. Talk to him. Explain to him. Without, without saying the truth. But... Around, around, around. And he used to make dua, Ya Rab, guide Umar. Ya Rab, guide Umar. Because Umar has a good, a good mind, a good, a good person. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he decides Umar to accept Islam, you know the story. He said, uh, the one who divided the community, I should not let, let him stay in Mecca. I, I want to go to kill Muhammad. I want to kill Muhammad. So he went to Prophet Muhammad to kill him. In the way, one of the Sahaba, he said, let me tell Muhammad, I want to tell the Prophet that somebody is coming to kill him so he can prepare himself. How can I delay Umar? He said, yeah, Umar, if you want to kill Muhammad, السلام, start with your sister first. Your sister is Muslim. So he released a secret information just to delay Umar a little bit so he can what? Warn Prophet Muhammad, let him be prepared, السلام, to this crisis, Umar, a good fighter, this character, this kind of person. So he went to Fatima. She was reading Quran. What is this? I can't give it to you. You are not Muslim. Go and make a shower. He, make, he made a shower. He opened the paper. He recites. And immediately he changed his what? His attitude. The information what? Being updated. 
this is not something bad. And it was Surah Taha. And he accepted Islam. In the beginning, he was going to kill him in the trap to Prophet Muhammad. At the end, he accepted Islam. So changing the information will change the attitude. Without spending anything, no money, no even, even time. Just go and teach, teach, teach. Reach the people. Explain to them. Answer questions. Tell them, tell them. Some cases we receive husband and wife. Khwani, they don't know each other. And they thought that we can't survive together. You don't ex exchange information. You don't know that. For example, for example, I received a case one time. He divorced her because he, he said she's not respecting me and my mom. She's not respecting me and my mom. How? How? Give me an example. He said, always she speaks loud. She speaks loud in front of me and my, my mom. I met her. Is this correct? She said, Wallahi ya Imam, this is my voice. This is God gave it to me. My voice is what? Loud. I'm not disrespecting him. This is what God created me like that. It's not in my hand. I couldn't. I explained to him, guys, come in. This is something normal. Look, she speaks like that. You see some people, subhanAllah, their, their voice, what jahuri? What jahuri means? Loud, by default. She's not disrespecting you, but you don't ex exchange information. You have to know. You have to tell. You have to explain. And a lot of examples. So, change the information. You change the attitude immediately. Example number three. You know, Quraysh government, as any government these days, if they want to work against something, they will put the fund and they will hire people to achieve their goals. Quraysh government, in the time of Prophet Muhammad, while he was in Mecca, in the season of Hajj, they put plan not to let anybody listen to Muhammad because they thought, they thought if somebody listened to Muhammad, he will make him what Muslim and this is not good for us. We don't want anybody to meet him, especially leaders of the tribes. Because in that time, Ikhwani, if the leader accepted Islam, all his people will follow him. This is, ha this is the habit in the past. They trust. So one of those leaders, he came to Mecca. Quraysh sent to meet him and explain to him Abu Lahab himself. The uncle of Prophet Muhammad He met him out of Mecca before he enters Mecca. And he said, yeah, leaders means president of country. Come to Mecca and he greeted him good and he treated him good. Then he said, my nephew, I know him. I, I think you hear what he's doing in Mecca. He is a magician and he affects people. So our advice to you as government in Mecca because we care about you. Close your ears, put something in your ears, don't even listen to him because he affected you. Same thing the media these days, Islamophobia, terrorists, don't listen. When the people will see the Muslims, they will change their, immediately change their mind. The media is saying something and the reality is what? Something else. The history is repeating itself the same. Don't listen to him, he affects you. You can't resist. Our advice, close your ears. Put something in your ears. Then you go to make tawaf and visit the, the Kaaba and do the Hajj, whatever there. Trip over there for what? So in the beginning, he said, okay, I trust you, leaders. And sometimes the protocols, you know, Sayyid Qabila came and he met a Sayyid Qabila, leader of Qabila, there is protocol. Maybe he said, okay, I will do it just to make Abu Lahab uh, happy. Or he, he, he believed in that in the beginning. As the media now convinced a lot of people, yes, terrorists, terrorists, terrorists. The killings have bombed them. When they saw the Muslims, 180 degrees. Subhanak Rabb. For that, you are ambassadors in this country. Each one of you is Muhammad. 
delivering this Islam in a right way. So increase your knowledge to make your attitude good, inshallah, and you achieve. So Am went to Al Kaaba. The first thing he has to do what? At Tawaf. You know that. Greeting Mecca by what? Praying to Raka. No, by doing Tawaf. He said, I started my Tawaf, first term, third, second, third. In the third term, he started talking to himself. Amir, are you crazy? You're a leader. And you have a mind. Why you should, it, why you should do that? Go and listen to him and see. Judge it in your mind. Use your mind. Don't use others' mind. This is my statement always. Don't turn your mind off and use others' mind. Unless if he's Rasulullah, that's fine. And he's not here anymore. Don't judge using others' judgment. No. So Amr, he was in this statement. Oh my goodness, what I'm doing? And in his tawaf, he saw people around somebody. said, maybe that is Muhammad. I want to go to him. So he stopped his tawaf after the third term. And he went to Rasulullah sallam. Absolutely, Rasulullah sallam, he received wahi. He said, Amr, he welcomed me. And he mentioned me, mentioned me by my name. Ahlan bi Sayyid Dawus. Welcome, a leader of Dawus. And he said, Wallah, he didn't talk to me. He just put his hand over my chest. And he said, Say Astaghfirullah. And he swabbed his chest like this. Astaghfirullah. The moment he said, the moment he put his hand over my chest, Islam enters my heart. Immediately. I said, I witness that La ilaha illallah and oh you, you Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah. He said the shahada. He said, Amr, he narrated this hadith, I went to continue my tawaf. He started his tawaf kafir, mushrik, and he finished the same tawaf sahabi. Like the trip of Umar, he went his trip to Dar al Arqam to kill the Prophet. Salam, he end up what? Sahabi. Say Astaghfirullah. His hand. The information, the information, and the attitude. When he th started thinking, using his mind, he deleted all what Abu Lahab downloaded in his mind, wrong, wrong data, clarify, go and listen by yourself, judge by yourself. You change your attitude. I, he said, I finished my tawaf, finished my umrah. I went to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, how can I help you? How can I serve this deen? He said, Ya Amir, go and teach your people. He said, I left Mecca, this is before Hijrah. And he came back to Medina in the year of the Wufud, the delegation's uh, uh, year, after 15 years from that meeting. He never came back to Mecca, 15 years. He came back with all Daws. That was the name of his tribe. All his people, Muslims, to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One person changing the in wrong information in his mind lead him to be Sahabi and spread Islam to his people. We want to do the same, Ikhwani, with our own family, with our own friends and neighbors and partners. Teach them the right information. Tell them the correct information. Because absolutely the previous information prevent, prevent anybody to listen. You have to wash and change and clean up. And this is why Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he spent 13 years in Mecca working on the Arab over there just to clean up the shirk, to clean up worshiping the stones. After that, when they adopted the aqidah, the faith, look what they did in the history. Not just in Mecca, not just in Medina. Why we are Muslims here in this country? In Asia, in Africa, in everywhere. Because of the effort of those Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim. They changed the history of the humanity. Spread justice everywhere. Alhamdulillah, this is there because they were honest. And they sacrificed for the sake of Kalimatullah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that reason, Ikhwani, do we have problems among the community by giving general judgment? Yes, we have. 
How we can solve this problem? Slow down, change the wrong information by teaching and reteaching and reteaching to have your expectation from the people. Because not everybody in the community like you. Not everybody understood the knowledge in the speed that you have. Some people they need more time, some people they have difficulty in the learning, they need different ways. Some people you have to speak frankly to them, some people they get it just indirectly. So this is a skills. For that is Khwani, we have to learn how to reach people, how to talk to them, how to let them understand the fact. Then the result will be in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we shouldn't give general judgment before we read and know the knowledge, change the information to change the attitude insha'Allah ta'ala. And if you have kids, absolutely you can test this with your kids, how to let your son or your daughter change something that he used to do it, a habit for example. You, you, sh you can't give order, hey daddy, don't do that. Hey, maybe he will respect you in front of you. But when you are outside, he will do it. But when you change it from here, explain to him why you said no, then he will do it, even if you are not in the house. We ask Allah to be in this moment from those who will hear the good and follow the best of it. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum.